Second half of action about to get started. Railer starters out there on the floor. Olden, Horsham, Bowlby, Block, and Max Cook. Jumper on the way. That's going to be shooting up an air ball. Quick start for Granite City. Rebound comes down to the Railers. Cook quickly. Horsham looks at the shot. Doesn't take it. Swing it around the perimeter. Gavin hands off to oh, Max. Right down the middle, Max. Gavin. Olden three, top of the key. Nice. That's good. Yeah, that great penetration um, off of our four, basically five out around the perimeter. And uh, Max Cook gets all the way to the free throw line. A little kickback pass to Joey Olden at the top of the key. And, and Joey's starting to shoot the ball a lot better. Joey with eight, tipped away by Horsham. Almost a steal. Down the lane, contact as the shot out. goes down for Banks. Makes it 33-4. to four. Horsham left side three. That's short, no good. Rebound to Trey Allen yeah. for the Warriors. Still Tyler not, uh, not really found his rhythm at all this year. I think one game he had the three threes. And uh, other than that, uh, he has not found his shot um, in, in this season yet. And Josh, you know you talk about this play down here on this near side where Bowlby tried to take the charge. Maybe in a four or five point game as the shot is up and good for Barry. It's now 33 to six. You wonder if in a four or five point game they do call that charging foul, but with the margin the way it is, they're just gonna kind of let it go as Bowlby what? fires a three and it's off. Horsham the rebound, that's no good. Rebound down to the Warriors. Uh, I'm, if I'm an official though, and, and I got a guy that's gonna give up his body uh, to get you know a big collision uh, to try and take a charge, I don't you know to me I don't care what kind of score it is. The guy put his uh, you know his health and uh, himself on the line. Another steal by the Raiders. Joey comes out with it. Gavin hits a three from the left side. Yeah, keep moving. Uh, now the threes are starting to fall. Uh, Bowlby had a wide open three. Last possession wasn't able to get it down, and then Tyler did a good job of going to the boards. Uh, just um, just couldn't get the rebound to fall. As there is a steal by Max Cook and a pass to Joey Olden for two. As the, uh, the defense keeps coming and, and when will coach, uh, usually in high school it's about the fourth quarter of when they'll call off the full court. 38-6. Olden as we're under six minutes to go in the third. Horsham, can he get one this time? That one spins off yeah. no good. And he and likes rebound, that. rebound foul for Gavin. And he likes that corner too. That's his, uh, that's his corner. That's where he loves to shoot it from. And again, uh, and you see the Railers uh, giving him fives. Uh, trying to get some, trying to get him going a little bit because they know uh, they know he needs uh, they need him to to knock a couple threes down each game. Bobby Donovsky into the contest for the first time for the Railers, the six foot senior. Railers already with eight threes here on the afternoon. Barry off the glass and good. Yeah, now they're going to press. And, uh, you know, it, the Raiders are really hard to press because they move the ball. Everybody can handle the basketball, and, they, and they, they, uh, they're, they're confident with it. Down in the corner, Olden back out to Cook. Donofsky on the wing, back out to Gavin, top of the key. Now over to Donofsky. He thought about the three, kicks back out to Gavin. Yeah, man. Bulby just keep moving in the middle. He can Donofsky be wide open. fires a three. Off the front of the rim, no good. Rebound down to Granite City. Five minutes to go in the third. Railers on top by 30, 38 to 8. Barry again flips it up. That's no good. Allen comes down with it over Donovsky. He goes up, and he's going to be going to the line, and he will be shooting two. First foul whistled on Donovsky, second on the team at the line. Is 6-1 sophomore Trey Allen looking for his first points of the day and the free throw rolls good. Second one. That one will bounce off no good. A little bit more of an effort we've seen from Granite City. Yeah, they've gotten to the hole. They're they're attacking a little bit more in the first half. They just couldn't get any, you know, any of their layups or their shots to fall. And I think they're, you know, maybe their coach uh, settled them down a little bit. Gavin, top of the key three. That won't be any good. Olden tries to get the rebound. He does. Flips it over to Take it up, Bowlby. Bobby. Back to Gavin. Open top of the key three. That one's off the left side. No good. Bowlby down there still trying to fight for it. Ball's lost out of bounds. And it's lost off of Bowlby. It'll go back to Granite City. Yeah, I love to find Bowlby uh, around that block where we, we found him a couple times early in the first half uh, getting open and uh, continue to keep the ball moving and, and hopefully find we've we've just gotten a lot of threes lately here in the first uh, or the third quarter um, we're shooting a lot of threes 
4.15 to go in the third. It's Lincoln 38, Granite City 9 almost tip away. Another steal. It is. Olden head quickly to Max. Max with a spin move in the lane nice. off the glass. Yeah, and that good. was a pretty move and a great pass up by Joey Olden. A steal by Donofsky. Uh, a tip away by Donofsky. A steal by Olden. He fires it down almost like a quarterback to a wide open receiver. And, uh, and, the, and uh, Max Cook did a great job of getting to the basket. Nice move underneath. That's up and good for Ron Allen. His first two. It's 40-11, but quickly down court, Joey scores on the layup. Yeah, nice pass. Uh, nice pass, a football, baseball pass from, from center field by Gavin Block to a uh, cutting wide open <laughs> Joey Olden. Bowlby gets in the way, contact, and now Ed's going to pick up the foul. That'll be Bowlby's second, third on the team as Conrad gets ready to check in for the Railers. Three and a half to go in the third. A little bit sloppier on defense, I think, for the Railers. Intensity is there pretty, uh, pretty much is the same as the first half, but uh, we're allowing now Grant City to get to the hole a little bit, so they're having an opportunity to score a little bit more. Barry's first free throw is good. He's got five all here in the half. And, Josh, you talk about staying out of bad habits in games like this. The way Granite City's been able to get to the basket, starting to lean to right. those bad habits. Yeah, yeah, and just uh, not not staying in front, not uh, not denying, not getting out a little bit more. So the Railers got to continue to do defensively what they did in the first half and uh, keep that intensity. Three and a half to go in the third. Adam Conrad in, Will Cook in for the Railers. Lincoln on top, 42-13. We thank you for joining us here on a Thursday. Donofsky skips it across now to Max Cook, Gavin. Railers have no difficulty breaking the press. Donofsky fakes the three, drives in, gets it over to Max. Yeah, keep the ball moving, get it in the middle. Gavin spins, kicks it out to Will, thought about it in the corner, didn't take. Looked like Gavin had Adam Conrad cutting right to the basket. There he is, Go Adam on, with man. the catch. Back out to Max. Max will take it to the basket. Now kick it out to Gavin. Corner three on the way. Spins out no good. Conrad, he tried to grab the board, yeah. tipped it out, but back to Will Cook. Yeah, great ball movement again by the Railers. Gavin, and foul's going to be whistled on Granite City. 2.56 left in the third. Railers up 29. Foul is on Ron Allen, his first. First on the team. It's only the second foul that's been whistled on Granite City for the entire game. Max skips it all the way across. Gets it over to Gavin. Gavin with a nice screen from Adam. Kicks it out to Will. Donofsky. Max will bring the dribble out near the timeline. Two and a half to go. Donofsky high arcing. Three yeah. is good. Yeah, and a nice screen down by Conrad. He just uh, basically sat down on the block and and almost acted like he was posting up, and that guy could not get around Conrad and uh, Donofsky wide open in the uh, corner. Take a charge. Barry goes in. That's no good. Rebound down to Allen. Ball loose still, but Allen gets it up and in. Allen with three. So the Railers uh, right now hanging with that uh, just around that 30-point margin, 45-15. Two minutes to go in the third. Gavin turns at the elbow. Donofsky can hit two in a row. Spins off no good. Nice. Cook. They're blocked with the rebound. Now back out to Max Cook. Max down the lane. Contact. Yeah. Good job. And uh, I love the way the Railers have been on the offensive boards today. Now I think we had seven at half, and there's another two for nine for the Railers on the offensive rebounds. And if you can just get, uh, you know, seven to nine of those every game, you know, just get yourself uh, an extra opportunity to score. Not sure why Max not going to free throw line, but 140 to go in the third. Railers up 45-15. Max drives the lane again. Had his layup knocked away. Nice defense by the Warriors as they head this way. Three on the way. That's up and good. That is Barry. Nine points all in the quarter. Granite City's probably be going. Where was this in the first yeah, half? Yeah, if they were. Uh, would have scored a couple more in the uh, first half. They would have been a little, obviously a little closer. Cook to Cook. Max over to Will. Donofsky, Cruz, and Conrad on the floor with him uh, for the Railers. I think that coach always likes to try and keep either Max or Gavin in, that, uh, in the game where they can uh, – distribute or just have that confidence in, in that ball handler. Will's three from the corner is no good. Bounce ahead. Nice catch by Barry. 
Saves it inbounds, but saves it right back to Max. 40 seconds to go. Railers have a two on three. Cook flips it over to Will Cook. Underneath. Max flips it quickly to Cruz. Nice ball movement from the Railers. Conradi, 17-footer. That's no good. Cruz trying to fight for it. Conradi trying to fight for it. Bodies hit the floor. Nothing being called. And I think it's first down for the Railers. <laughs> <laughs> now, last time when we when we dove on the floor, Conradi got a foul down here, <laughs> but uh, their guy just went and trampled on us. And, uh, again, a jump ball. <laughs> 25.8 to go. 45-18. But, you know, that is the nice thing. You're up 27. There are some teams that we know that will just – watch the ball roll across the floor, not the yeah. Railers. No, no, we had two guys going after it. And, and again, like you said, great ball movement on that uh, that possession. And I got over to about a 10-footer from Conrad. And, and uh, we just haven't, haven't been able to get the uh, shots to go down here in the uh, in the third quarter like we were, especially the, the 10 to 15-foot range. And, you know, the threes have been going down, our layups have been going down, but uh, we haven't had that mid-range yet. Down to 15 seconds, so the Railers look to hold for the last shot of the quarter. Start the offense with 10. Now over to Donofsky. Conradi on top. Cook in the corner. Underneath. Slip it. Cruz, Cruz three. fires a three. Oh. That's no good. Ball tipped around. Still loose. And that's the way our third quarter will end with a score. Lincoln 45. Granite City 18. We'll be back with the fourth quarter in 60 seconds. You're listening to Lincoln. Railer Masters on top 45-18. Look like they're just about eight minutes away from advancing to... The second round contest at 2.30 tomorrow against the winner of either McClure North or MacArthur. Yeah, the foul is going to be whistled on the Railers. One thing we didn't do last year was uh, get past this first game. So you get this one out of the way and uh, all the jitters, and, and I think the, that will be gone. You know, you, the number one seed thing hangs over you still, but uh, I don't think it bothers this group uh, that much. They, they're confident in their game, and, and they're hopefully uh, will uh, we'll stand up to that. On the floor for the Railers, Austin Cruz, Max Cook, Will Cook, Peyton Ebelair, and Adam Conradi. Two Railers in double figures so far this afternoon. Joey Olden leading the way with 12, Max Cook with 11. Well, they really get a lot of, there again, Ebelair gets his hand on the basketball. We don't get the steal, but, um, you know, quick hands and active hands. Three from the right side, spins off no good. Will Cook tracks down the rebound. Quickly across the timeline, down the lane. Nice. Flips it up off the glass, oh. won't go down. Yeah, nice uh, nice rebound for one on the end. He traced it down in the corner and Will went coast to coast. Picked up the foul, almost got the uh, basket to go, but Will's gonna go to the free throw line for two. And um, you know, another one of those weapons coach can bring off the, uh, off the bench. Cook's first free throw on the way, off the front of the rim, no good. Will came in a 67% free throw shooter. Railers first free throw attempts of the day and they both bounce off no good. So the score stays 45-18. Railers up 27. Again stolen away. And, and probably our team MVP in a game that we're up 27, 20, whatever that is, is that 27? 27, 27 yeah. points. He tips it and then dives for it on the ground. So, you know, you can't uh, you can't be one of our role players and say that I'm not going to dive when you got one of your better players and, and senior captain going on the floor in a 27-point game. Seven minutes to go. Ebel Air on top to Max Cook. Cruz kicks it back out. Max three. <sighs> yep. It hit the rim hit and, the and then top. it hit the standard yeah. and then fell through. So it's out of bounds and Max will take a seat as Jordan Perry into the contest for the first time. I think Max knew he was coming out, so he was going to let one more fire <laughs> before the day was over as Perry checks into the game. So uh, we've got junior, junior, four juniors and a senior when you've got uh, Will Cook, Peyton E. Belair, and uh, Jordan Perry along with Adam Conradi and then the senior Austin Cruz. But Granite City into the front court, firing off a three. That spins off no good. Fight for the rebound. Can be tracked and saved. It is. Nice job by Austin Cruz. Head quickly to Ebelair. 
Railers' first game this year, not at Roy S. Anderson. Yeah, you're right. First true road game of the year. I guess it's not true, being a neutral site, but uh, first time they've had to get on the bus or the vans or yep, whatever they brought here. Yeah, Mother Nature getting in the way of the contest that mm -hmm. uh, would have been down at Chatham. But uh, certainly no... Uh, no ill effects here on the road as Evil Air fires a right side three and connects. Yeah, Evil Air, I think, uh, I don't know if he's had many threes before this game today, but uh, he got one earlier in the contest, and there, that was a nice one. That, that one was from six or eight inches behind the three-point line, so uh, he's one of the guys that can go out and, and stretch the floor for Coach Al. 5.40 to go, Railers up 30. Yeah, for Evil Air, he came into the contest with one three on the season. Mm -hmm. He's already hit two here today. That's the 10th three the Railers have hit in the contest this afternoon. Been able to do it from uh, a number of different areas today, and I, and I think you give a lot of credit to the way they've changed their uh, offense a little bit where they're trying to, uh, to push the floor, push the, push the ball up the floor as Conradi steps up from about 10 to, to hit the baseline jumper. But they started to push the basketball more. Guys were getting up and down the floor a little more. Now you may need to, to uh, substitute a little more uh, with – you know, some tired guys playing as hard a defense as we do, but uh, boy, it's a lot more enjoyable to watch. Enjoyable to watch, and the, and the guys uh, look like they're having a lot of fun playing it. Three is no good from Hopkins. Evil air into the front court, down on the corner. Peyton thought about it, kicks back out to Cruz. Cruz over in the corner, back now to Perry, top of the key. His three, that'll go good. Yeah, we've seen uh, early on in the season where he can step up and shoot the three. This is basically. Uh, you know, there's four starters off a team that lost only one game last year with Coach Greg Alexander um, in the sophomore level. So you, these guys have got some experience too. 53-18 with Perry hitting. He's now the seventh different railer to hit a three, and he's going to try and hit two in a row. That one's off the back of the rim, no good. Ball loose, picked up by Granite City. Yeah, Will Cook fighting off for an offensive rebound uh, down on the other end. You know, it's interesting. We talk about, uh, you know, having 11 threes on the game, seven players have hit them, and the player that was leading the team coming in with made threes, Bowlby does not have one today. <laughs> no, but he had several layups. Uh, you know, I, it's been a, been a great team effort as uh, looks like Hop's going to check in, the sophomore, and also Isles coming in. We see K.J. Fry checking in yeah. as well. Yeah, and if you notice the running clock too now, yep. uh, 30 after 30 points, especially I think they do it as I think in a normal game you have to agree on it, but in tournament uh, in order to keep these games moving, uh, they they do implement the 30-point uh, rule where the, the clock only stops timeouts uh, and things like that. 53-19 on the made free throw. So Hop, Cruz, Perry, Isles, and Fry on the court for the Railers. A senior, uh, a junior, and uh, three sophomores, I believe. Nice. Underneath, nice, nice pass. Cruz to Hop, lays yeah. it up and in. And, and what's nice, you know, you've got Hop, who's a sophomore that, that received the pass from Cruz, but they all run the same thing. So they all know exactly what to do, where the passes are going to be. Um, you know, the, the program is built. If a freshman level, you're going to know the same thing as the varsity level, and, and they can implement in different age groups at any time, and they know exactly what to do. So senior to sophomore, and a great back cut by Hop. Foul was on Perry. His first 55-19, Railers up by 36. Yeah, and I don't know that there's a better athlete on our in our program than where's the number five. Uh, just a sophomore, but you want to see a guy run when he gets the ball. Uh, he can flat out run, and uh, nice to see him getting in. Bobby Donofsky checking in for the other senior, Austin, Austin Cruz. Under two minutes to go in this one. Railers will advance to the 2.30 contest against either McClure North or MacArthur. Fry, hands to Isles. Fry not... Is that not a John Harmson replica as far I, as the, yeah. the body type and the hair? I mean, it just, it just see John Harmson, and a kid can shoot it too, so uh, he fits right in there with Johnny. Hop. 90 seconds to go. 
Perry over to Fry. Now you do know that at some point I'm going to accidentally call him Harmson. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least the, the listeners will know who you're talking oh, about. Oh, yes. Then. Hop, top of the key over to Perry. JP fires another Ooh. three and hits. Yeah, the, uh, the golfer uh, is showing he can do it on the basketball court, too. Number 10, Perry, with his second three of the ball game. That makes it 58 to 19. Raylers are going to have some fun tonight and uh, be back at 2.30 tomorrow against uh, whoever, Decatur MacArthur or McClure North. Uh, they have got, I know Decatur MacArthur has a kid going to St. Louis. Um, and then I know McClure um, is a very good basketball team. A lot of people thought that they should have gotten a number one seed. So uh, that'll be a great game uh, tipping right after us here. Hop with a spin move in the lane, throws it off the glass and good. Raylers up 60-21. 30 seconds to go in this one. Another three. That's missed badly. Isles grabs the rebound for the Railers. Yeah, that'll probably be the last, last shot unless somebody gets a wide open layup. So a good, uh, good outing for the Railers. 60 to 22. Six, 15 seconds left. So we will move on to the 2:30 game tomorrow. So all Railer fans listening, uh, it's supposed to be a nice day, I believe, tomorrow. So uh, hop in the car and get down here and. and uh, Support your Railers as there's a great crowd already here, probably going to spend the night for most of them, and, uh, and we'd love to see you down here tomorrow. You heard the horn. That's our final here as the Railers move to 8-0 on the season with a 60-22 win over Granite City. And as Josh said, they're now set up to play in the 2:30 contest tomorrow against either McClure North or Decatur MacArthur. Again, our final score from Collinsville. Lincoln, 60 Granite City 22. We'll be back with our post-game show in just a moment. Back in two minutes, you're listening to Lincoln Railer Bass. Coach Alexander now joining us here on the post-game show. Coach, congratulations on the win uh, through day one of the uh, Collinsville tournament, advancing to the second round with the 60-22 win over Granite City. And uh, overall, very good performance from the team. Uh, you know, it, it would be kind of hard to say anything different when you get out to uh, you know a 16 nothing lead at the end of the first quarter. Uh, but as Josh and I were just talking about, ball movement very good, defensive pressure very good. Uh, you know, obviously we did note that uh, Granite City very young, uh, but uh, still, uh, young or not, the uh, the Railers came out and did I think exactly what you wanted them to do on day one, trying to avoid what happened last year against Oakville, moving into the consolation bracket. Didn't want that happening today. No, not at all. Uh, by far, and, and they're really a young basketball team, and, and you know they don't even compare to the team that we uh, lost to last year, the Oakville. Um, you know, but uh, I, I, we worked on a lot of things this week. We tried to push the ball a little bit more. Uh, you know, I like to score a lot of points. Uh, I thought our guys done a nice job with both ends of the floor, even trying to push the ball and get up and down the floor. I thought our bench was good. Kids came off and contributed off the bench. And, uh, you know, you can't ask for much more than that. Uh, you know, for, for only being our third game in the, in the month of December, I thought we played pretty well. Yeah, Coach, exactly uh, pushing the ball. And you, you talked about it. it looked like the kids had a really enjoyable time of doing it. You know, they, whether Gavin got it and he fired it down the sideline and uh, whether we were getting layups uh, on baseball passes from Gavin Block to Joey Olden or walk-up threes, uh, just a lot more opportunities out there for the Railers to score. Well, you know, the baseball pass to Joey, uh, that should be an option that we have <laughs> uh, quite a bit. Joey's playing on the point. Joey doesn't have any rebounding, uh, you know, responsibility. So he can get out and down the floor. He's not our point guard on offense. Max is that. So, uh, you know, that that's what we spent a lot of time on this week is trying to get out and create some easier shots for us and I thought we got some uh, some easier ones. Coach uh, we've seen over the past few years that the one place that if Max feels the most comfortable shooting three whether it's part of the set offense or in the secondary break is right at the top of the key. He hit one of those early and that just seemed to uh, get him even more into the contest. Max had a very good floor game. In fact Josh pointed out with the lead I think it was already 27-28 you know, you can't have anybody on the bench saying, well, I'm not going to dive on the floor because you've got one of your team leaders tipping the ball away, diving on the floor. Max brings a lot of things to the table, even if he's not doing a lot of scoring. Uh, yeah, I, I thought Max had a great game. Uh, his floor game was good. I thought he missed a couple. You know, he should have went to the basket instead of kicking. And But that's him. Uh, you know, he's so unselfish, and he's really a great point guard uh, because he, he's got himself second, and the team is first. And, 
you know, for a point guard to have that mentality is, is really good. And for his talent to take a back seat where he's a good shooter and, uh, you know, he, but but I thought he mixed it. I thought he missed a couple layups that he should have had. But, you know, I I want everything to be perfect, <laughs> and it's not going to be. Well, almost perfect was your game plan uh, today, Coach. You said you're going to change it the way you approach this 1 o'clock game, uh, getting here a little earlier, getting a walk through, and uh, seemed like you uh, pushed the right button there. Well, I... <laughs> We, were, we got here, you know, I imagine they slept a little bit on the way down, and we got down here at a uh, little after 9, and they'd already had the gym open, so we really got an hour and a half of workout. So, uh, you know, it did work out really well for us. Coach, uh, coming up next, uh, McClure North against MacArthur. Uh, this will be the winner of this game will be who you will face tomorrow. And as we mentioned throughout the broadcast, uh, there are – some so-called experts, whoever they may be, that were wondering why maybe McClure North, a very, very good team, did not get one of the top four seeds. So even though the Railers get the one seed, if you're already looking at a team that people are considering should have been a top four seed, if they beat MacArthur, not an easy draw tomorrow. No, not at all. But what the heck, we ain't going to have an easy draw in the regional <laughs> either. So might as well get used to it. That uh, You know, you got to play who's in front of you. And you. If you sit back and feel sorry for yourself, you... Uh, bad things happen, so we're going to approach it like, uh, you know, they got the bad draw, not us. <laughs> yeah, they got to play us after the <laughs> second right. round. So, and they don't have a – they got a good MacArthur team with the kid going to St. Louis uh, University uh, today. So, uh, Coach, uh, get them back and let them have a little bit of fun, and, uh, you know, we'll have to be back ready for 2.30 again tomorrow. That's At least right. we're playing here this year. That's right. <laughs> we, we won't leave this gym. <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> but the, the one thing about Max, uh, who do you think was more upset, the coaching staff – or will on Max's ill-advised behind-the-back pass? Well, I'm sure the coaching staff. <laughs> well, I'd say Will will be too ma pretty mad, too. That's two points for him. <laughs> he might, I hope they're not rooming together tonight. Uh, that could be a war. Uh, it's always a war. <laughs> <laughs> Your brotherly love. Yeah. All right, Coach, congratulations on the win, and we'll see you back here tomorrow at 2.30 against either McClure North or MacArthur. Well, thank you. Railers with the victory, win by 38, and we'll be back to wrap things up here in just a moment. You're listening to Lincoln Railer Basketball. <laughs> 